Hey guys, welcome back to Main Valley TV and Outdoors. Figured we'd take advantage of the nice weather and actually review this machine outside. This is Segway Power Sports Snarler AT6 SX. So we're gonna get into everything that we've tested and how we feel about it right after this intro. Hey guys, so first things first, I want to thank Segway Power Sports Canada for obviously setting all this up with me. We've been in talks for about a year to try to get this stuff done, and luckily we did actually manage to make it happen, in part because of Thunder City Power and Leisure out of Estevan SK. So I want to say big thank you to everyone involved. It's been a pleasure, and I cannot wait to see what else is in the future because we do have quite a bit going on with Segway later down the road. So the big thing is on May 28th, which if you're watching this video is literally the weekend right after this, uh, there's gonna be a big demo day event. Segway is gonna be at Flinder City Power and Leisure in Estevan. And we're gonna have all sorts of machines that we can test. They're literally closing down the roads. They have like a whole street or block that's gonna be able to maneuver the machines around. You get to try them all out. So that's gonna be pretty wild. We're gonna be there and we're very, very excited to meet you guys and try these Segways with you. So I just wanna preface this video with the fact that Segway Power Sports is pretty new to the market. Segway as a whole obviously isn't, but Segway Power Sports just showed up to Canada last fall. So what they've done since then to now is really impressive. The dealer network that they're setting up is growing incredibly fast. There are a few growing pains and a few things that I would change, but there's even more impressive things. It's just something for you to note. So one last note is basically that this review that you're watching right now is the video version. If you go over to mainvilleatv.ca and click articles, you'll find a written review. If that's more your speed, and on top of that, we also have the Fugelman review that we did the other day. So if you want to watch that, we'll have links down below in the description for you. And now we're actually going to move into the review. Okay guys, so we're going to be taking a tour around the machine. We're going to start with kind of the exterior and some of its looks and features. You're going to start seeing a pattern right away with these machines. Segway, with all of their machines, had a concept obviously that they really enjoyed. And you can see it between all three, the Snarler, the Fugelman, and the Villain. So the first big thing is obviously the headlights. Really cool LED design. Everything else is really standard about it, but there are actually different lights on all three machines. They just look exactly the same. A lot of the body panels, although very dirty, we did put them to use, are smooth and like an automotive paint. So they're very easy to clean. I really enjoy that about that. The only thing I didn't enjoy was this right here, this kind of shroud that's protecting your rad, although good, makes it very difficult to actually clean inside there. So if you're out of, on the trail and you have to wash that, it is a bit of a pain in the butt. And even when you actually get it home, you either have to tear some of that out or kind of work around it. Not the biggest deal, but something to keep in mind. Next up, obviously, you have the bumper here. So this bumper, I, I thought, would be kind of flimsy, but it's actually really well tied into the frame. And it's what actually holds your winch entirely. The winch is basically an off-the-shelf 2500. They put some Segway branding on it. It works very well. Steel wire rope though, I'm hoping to see some synthetic options in the future. I'm still a steel wire rope guy. Some people aren't. I would actually argue most people aren't, but the option would be nice. So coming around, we do have the racks. The storage racks are super, super nice. Very strong, sturdy, no rattling. The fit and finish on this entire machine is fantastic. That's obviously a staple that Segway is going for. They may be new to power sports, but they're obviously not new to creating something because all of this plastic is super tight. Nothing rattles, nothing's weak feeling. I don't feel like I have to baby this at all. And that includes the rack. Now, the only problem I do have with it is it doesn't have a textured top in any way. It's just standard hard plastic. I'd like to see something a little more grippy here. And the reason for that is as a Joe Blow to a Joe Blow, when you're using these machines, sometimes you're gonna go hunting, for example, and you just have to put some traps in a milk crate. You place it on here and you strap it down. This is gonna get worn out and that thing's gonna slide around quite a bit. So I'm hoping to see some sort of grip texture on the top. That'd be really cool. But otherwise, you can see that they have some sort of quick connect system that's gonna be out for all sorts of accessories. The only one that I've personally seen is a storage bin. And I know that more accessories are going to be coming out this year. I haven't seen them yet, so I can't review or talk about them. But all of the little slots for that to lock it in and you're good to go. Coming back around over here. I am five foot nine and a change. <laughs> hoping I'm still 185 pounds, but I might be a little more than that now. The reason why that's important is I want you to know that I fit really well, right? Now, on the channel we have Drake and he's lanky. He's six foot three or something crazy. And I also have another friend, Alex, 
who is running a YouTube channel called 780 Alex, he is six foot something more than that. But they had an issue where when they were riding down the trails, trying this machine out with me, that they would bump into some of these plastics. And at first I thought they were great. There's a lot of awesome ergonomics there and they were actually stopping you from getting pretty dirty. I thought they were great at first, but there is some fitness or fitment issues somewhere around six foot tall and above. You are gonna run into some of these plastics, I find. The only issue I had was the actual seat width is really wide, which feels awkward between your legs when you actually sit comfortably on the machine. And that's just because of the way the engine placement is. So something to keep in mind. I, I'm hoping in the future that can get slimmed a little bit. That would be good. Exact same rack on the back that's on the front, which is great, which means that if you have an accessory for the front, you have it for the back also. You're gonna notice that this is a one seater. The two seater is a bit longer of a machine and then you actually have the up seat that's legal and ready and mounted on that. These are two different machines. You can't just go get that up seat and put it on the one seater, it doesn't work. From what I understand, it's like six to eight or so inches longer of a machine and it accommodates that actual legal up seat. Believe it or not, or at least where we are, you can't just put a seat that you buy and put it here and it's not legal. Your machine actually has to be designed for it. In the back, I'm gonna grab a key which is important because not only do you have storage here, which we'll get to in a second, but you have storage in the back, which is lock and key. That's great. It's going to keep an honest thief out. It's pretty good. Lots of storage room in here. You're going to find your tools and everything from Segway in there. But there's tons of room in here to put your tow rope, whatever accessories you need, tire repair kit, whatever else. There is a dust seal, but you're going to notice that dust is in there. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So something to keep in mind. I'm, it feels really good, it feels solid. It's gonna hold whatever you need it to hold. Two inch receiver. You do have a bolt, mine's missing here. I must've rattled it out somewhere, but this will actually tighten down so nothing rattles and everything like that. This is all Segway branded stuff. You're gonna see a plug back here, but it's Euro from what I understand. We use seven pin and four pin here. So all the wiring is there. You can convert it if you want, but for some reason, it does come with that. I don't know why. You have a license plate mount and a license plate light, which is great. Not for Saskatchewan where I am, but where I'm from, Ontario, you have a plate, so that works. You're gonna see all sorts of reflectors and lights and things like that. On the corner here, we're gonna look at the tires. Same tire package that you're gonna see on the Fugelman and the, Snar or the uh, Villain. So you have a Wanda tire, which is a very light, soft tire. Perfect for the average trail rider, hunter, whoever. It's going to work out good. Hi, dog. <laughs> He's stealing the toe. Then you have your beadlock rim, which comes with the deluxe version of the machine. Uh, base model is going to have some sort of steel or base aluminum rim. Um, either way, a great upgrade. <laughs> hey, dog. You are going to see that the suspension does have piggybacks. So not only can you adjust your preload, but you do have piggybacks that you can adjust. So you have three settings there. Just a dial on the top and you can set your stiffness over here. You do have some sort of bar on the side. I'm not sure what the big idea is there, but it will protect your plastics, so that's good. I'm not overly big on it. I, I'm either neither here or there, but I have been in plenty of scenarios where this will save you if you're gonna rub off a tree or something like that. It's pretty awesome. On your clutch housing, on the bottom, you do have a drain available back here, which is good, because when uh, Drake and I were on our ride, we crossed a river and we were deep enough that we had a little bit of water actually get into the belt exhaust. It's not actually that low. We just kind of went a little deeper than we should have, but we were safe because the actual air box is really up high. You're not going to run into any issues if you're just, you know, treating this machine as you should. So one of the interesting things is when it comes to suspension and travel and stuff, that's not normally something you would talk about on an ATV because there's only so big of a window when your A-arms are literally this long. But there is something that I noticed in that area that is interesting, and that's the axles. Now, I come from a big 1,000cc kind of market, but I've also been all over the spectrum in different machines. I have never seen a machine of this size with axles that big. Like, these are the biggest axles I've seen on the market, period. As far as an ATV goes, they're huge. I don't know how to give you guys scale of that, but I mean, they're bigger than the actual A-arms themselves. Uh, so I don't know if that was just a smart 
off the shelf cheaper alternative or if there is a hybrid coming in the future for this. I guess, I, I don't know, I'm really hoping. I, I really hope that there is a hybrid option. I hope that there is a two cylinder option or something like that. And I hope that's a sign that they're getting prepared for something with more power because as it sits right now, I don't understand why they would have axles that large on a 570, but it could be all of those reasons. It could be none. I have no idea that part speculation. Either way, the axle is super overkill. If you guys have any idea as to why that might be, leave a comment down below. <laughs> Courtesy of our Canadian geese. Cobra, cobra chickens. Cobra chickens. Oh my God, they're close. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I would get to this in a second, but here's the other storage compartment. In here, it's keyed again. You're going to find USB and you're going to find a regular 12 volt, people call them cigarette power outlets or whatever. Either way, that is good. The app connectivity, the, the cell phone app for this vehicle is very useful. So it's actually awesome that there's power for your cell phone or something while you're going down the trail because there's some really neat features that we're gonna get into with the app. But over here, everything else on your controls, very simple, take your key. You can actually lock the steering, um, but there's also power, of course. You're gonna see your four wheel drive switch, very standard. Here's your four wheel drive, right? And there's your diff lock. So we're gonna take that out. Brake reservoir, mirrors we talked about earlier, kill switch, power, lights, and don't be scared. <laughs> Cute, eh? One of the big things that you're going to notice is different from this machine to the Fugelman and the Villain is that there's no big, you know, tablet display. There is an LCD display, so I'm going to have you come around here. It's not nearly as fancy or custom, but it does show everything very well. You have your trip kilometers your total hours and kilometers temperatures fuel rpm four-wheel drive that kind of stuff oh one of the strange things by the way is when you activate four-wheel drive it puts a circle in the middle to show that it's locked but the tires are highlighted so for the longest time i thought that it was always in four-wheel drive because the tires were blacked out let me know if you think that's weird down below because in my opinion the, the tires shouldn't be highlighted you know it's just one of those little things. Even though this display is the way it is and it's very static, when you connect this thing to an app, you have all of the same information that the Fugelman and the Villain have. And all you gotta do is when you buy your machine, you take a look under the seat and you're gonna find a code here. So when you go under the seat and you scan this code with that app, you're gonna turn it on and you're gonna get all the information that you could ever want about this machine. You can even stop this machine from turning on without access to your cell phone. Uh, there's information like your acceleration, your speed, your torque, your power, the whole bit. And there's also Segway Teams, just like everything else. With Segway Teams, you can keep track of all of your other Segway buddies, or you can map out your route, all of that kind of stuff. And there's all sorts of other features. Like, that's a whole video in itself. All I have to say that is, it's very impressive. It's really easy to use. I had very minor hiccups when I was trying to switch from this machine to the Fugelman, but otherwise the app worked flawlessly. And when I did have an issue, I called Thunder City Power and Leisure and they had it sorted out in no time. So when you go into your dealer, have them show you the app, it's really cool. I think you'll be impressed. One of the last things to discuss is power. This is a 570cc one lunger, okay? It's a single cylinder. It's making about 44 horsepower and that's obviously at the crank. So at the wheels, not much more than, I'm guessing 30 or something horse. Now, none of it, is surprising and how it works, feels, that kind of thing. When you're operating this machine, it feels exactly like you can imagine. If you've ever been on a single cylinder machine, it feels exactly the same. Lots of low end torque. Mid range is a little lackluster, but it's fine. And top end, it is fairly quick. It's faster than you definitely need. We had this thing topping out, I think it was like 93 kilometers an hour. Um, and then the ECU basically slowed us down. It probably can go faster if you didn't have those safeties, but uh, I think that's more than fast enough. If you're doing 90 kilometers an hour down a trail on this thing, you're, you're having a real good time or a really bad time. Where this thing really shines is hunters, homesteaders, trail riders. There's a lot of great uses for this machine. It's gonna perform more than well enough for what you need. When we had it out on the trail, I had a blast. 
I really love when I am more rider than there is machine. I had a very, very good time on this. As long as you're comparing this machine to other vehicles in its class, you're gonna have an absolute blast. If you think this is gonna compare to a big 1000 mud machine, it isn't. Are you gonna be able to hop in the mud and have blast if you're gonna go down the trail or uh, run the property or herd some cattle? I don't know what you're gonna do with it, but believe me, it can do the job. Just try to keep things within expectations. It's not the biggest machine on the market. Personally, when I had it out on a ride, uh, not just myself, but Drake here on the trail, we had a blast. We had a really good time riding it. When we really needed it to do whatever we needed it to do, it did its job. Whatever we demanded, it did. Within reason, I'm sure there's some sort of limitation, but we didn't really run into it. So I recommend this machine power-wise. It felt really good, it felt smooth. The clutching, the way it shifted, the way it acted, the only thing that I felt is a little lazy in the mid, but that's pretty standard for any one longer that I've ever ridden. At this point, basically, there's only a few things that I would adjust or change about this machine. Like I said, the grippy texture and the seat adjustment and maybe some plastic ergonomics so tall people don't bash their knees into it. But otherwise, what they presented on their first year or two here in North America is really unreal. So having a base model and a more deluxe version like this one, and not only an ATV, but a utility side-by-side -side and a sport side-by-side -side is really impressive to show up with. Now, moving forward, I would love to see different models of this machine, and I would certainly like to see different additions that you can make to it. Obviously, like gun racks or storage bins or you know different tire packages, maybe a mud version, maybe an outdoors version. There's all sorts of things that I'd like to see. I'm sure they're already working on it, but that's what I expect to see. Now, power-wise, I would love to see a twin. I would especially love to see a hybrid. I don't even know if that's possible, but it would be cool if you could slam a hybrid into this thing. The way this thing sits, I really like this unit. If I were looking for something in this category, I would highly recommend this unit. Another really cool fact is the way that they've been expanding their dealer network is faster and more impressive than most that I've ever seen. Like obviously there's established brands. There's some brands that are kind of backing off a little bit or getting a little slow. Segway is pushing really hard to actually have dealers all across the country. And uh, as you know, Canada is not a small country, but they're getting it done very quickly. They're already coast to coast and their dealer network is filling in. So that gives me a lot of confidence, not only in the machine, but if I need to go and get help, I can go get it. So otherwise wrapping this thing up, I uh, just wanted to say a few things. If you have any more questions, because I can't fit everything into a 20 plus minute video. Please leave them down below and I will answer them there. I would hate to make a 50 minute video and bore you to death. That would be the best way to do it and I will do my best to answer your questions. A big thank you to Segway Power Sports Canada. This is, this is a massive opportunity. I really enjoyed this. They asked me to be honest, which is really, really cool. They just gave me the unit and said, do what you gotta do, say what you gotta say, tell us what you think. And I think that is very commendable for a business to say that. Thunder City Power and Leisure has been nothing but accommodating in making sure that I can not only get these units, but getting us down there for the event and everything else. That is massive. A big thank you to them too. And to top this thing off, May 28th, if you're watching this video, it is literally a day or two after, we are going to be at Thunder City Power and Leisure in Estevan, Saskatchewan. And we're gonna be there from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can not only try these machines out on a closed course in town, which would be really cool. I can't wait actually, but you can meet us and hang out with the dealership, ask all your questions in person. They could probably answer them better than me, but that's basically the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time.